just going to say you've probably done a complete review of the game at this point. I was just wondering what's the key things you're looking to take into this game? Oh, good. Um, I guess, yeah, firstly, um, we're obviously really happy with the result on the weekend. Um, it's obviously tough to, to win on the road in the rugby championship and especially over here in Argentina. You know, we um, obviously set out to, to get a win and to come away with the bonus point was was an awesome result for us. But, um, yeah, we th think by no means was that, um, you know, playing to, to our complete ability and there's a lot of things we can improve on. Um, I think, firstly, they were, they were very physical um, in the tackle and at the breakdown and obviously forced quite a few turnovers there. So that's definitely one area we need to improve. And um, then just our detail and attack, I know that's pretty um, general, but, um, yeah, it kind of relates to, to most areas of our game. So um, hopefully we can, you know, rectify that going into the second test and put a more polished performance in. I say that start is sort of continuing to be a worry for this this side. I mean, is that something that you would try and grasp? I was just wondering if there's anything in particular you need to kind of need to focus on in that first 15, 20 minutes to really get get the game starting positively. Uh, I don't think it's anything specific. I think obviously Argentina at home, we're always going to come out strong, and um, you know we knew that. I think um, yeah, obviously this week we'll we'll try to come out a little bit stronger and hopefully get some points on the board early, uh, board early, early in the first 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there's nothing specific. Just for yourself, Race, I mean, for last week, you basically have to cover 10 to 15 as, as part of that sort of 6-2 bench split. In terms of preparation, how do you go about getting all the detail and knowledge into you that you can essentially slot into whatever you need to go to and if, say, another injury like Quays goes down this week? Um, yeah, I guess it's something that I've become pretty used to over the past few years I've been on probably a number of 6-2 benches now covering you know 10 to 15 so i um, pretty familiar with the process I need to go through and um, for me it's just asking plenty of questions um, watching plenty of vision and then it's hard to get reps in every position when you're um, when you're on the bench but um, just as many as possible throughout the week whether that's you know jogging through with with certain guys you know after the team session um, just getting as, as much of that kind of process as I can and just so that when it comes to, you know, Friday, Saturday, I'm at a point where I'm comfortable to slot into any position, you know, no matter who goes down. So um, fingers crossed all our, our back line can stay healthy um, this week and, yeah, we'll see what happens. So you're slotting into fly half, and I know it's not your natural position, but you've played a couple of games to test there. Was, were you able to just draw off that past experience, again, having slotted in there before when sort of Quaid went down that second half? Um, yeah, I guess uh, obviously having the guys around me step up helped a lot. Um, but I guess uh, talking personally, like obviously I grew up my first 21 years of my life playing 10. So whilst I haven't played, you know, that many games of test footy there, I've played plenty of super rugby and club footy there and it's not that foreign to me. So um, yeah, as I said, any position that I uh, get to slot into, I'm, I'm comfortable and yeah, it really helps having guys around me who just do their role and allow me to focus on mine. Uh, Jordy, um, congratulations on uh, a strong start to the, the season yesterday or over the weekend. Um, just moving back to the right wing, is it is it very much a, a case that the back three just wants to be quite interchangeable between you and, and Tom, uh, particularly the, over the weekend that you know, it doesn't really matter so much the the jersey that you're playing with, but you can, you know, you can move around quite easily. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's definitely one of our our strengths here in the squad is we're also interchangeable and we can all fill that role, being wing, fullback. So I think you saw with Kells as well in that first test, just how easy it was for him to slot in there and me come off the bench. Um, yeah, we it's it's good we're building depth. Um, players learning more roles and having the ability to fill those those roles when we need them to is um, yeah strength we're building on I think so. Yeah. It doesn't make it easier just from a, a personal perspective that if someone really harbors the position but they're actually rotating and and swapping maybe at times during the game that it that it isn't so much of a oh, I'm not wearing the 15 jersey. Um, so from an individual perspective, is it easy to get your head around that, that there is so much interchanging going on? I'm not sure if I understand the question, but yeah, was... in the sense that, 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 that 
in the past, it's you've, you've said that fullback is the position that you want to play, but because there is so much interchanging going on that it doesn't matter so much if you're on the wing or the full, uh, or at fullback. Yeah, I think um, a, l- a lot of those two positions share a, lot, share a lot of the same qualities. So I think, as you saw with Riley, he just slotted in quite naturally as well in those in those tests that, um, where we had injuries. So I think, um, yeah, it's definitely um, a positive for us that we were able to interchange and and just um, slot him where where Dave needs us. Yeah, and you must be thrilled that your body is coming up well and you're going through and you look really fit and confident out there. Um, yeah, no, nah, touch wood. Um, yeah, happy with how things are going, and um, yeah, we got a great um, SNC team here and medical medical staff, so they're keeping all the boys in in top shape. So it's it's um, good to see. Hey guys, good afternoon, Jordan. This one is uh, for you. <coughs> what can you say about the performance of Emiliano Feli, your rival in the? in the last game in your position. So, say about... What was that one? What can you say about the performance of Emiliano Ofeli, your rival? Oh, in what the, can I say about game? him? Um, yeah, strong, yes, Thank strong you. player. Um, yeah, strong player. Um, someone we we reviewed a lot um, pre-game. Um, we've got a strong back three, so I think, um, yeah, he was obviously uh, played a bit on that left wing in the Scotland series, so... Um, yeah, we had to do some uh, research on him, and yeah, he's a strong player. I thought he had a good game. Uh, Reese, hi. Um, how would you feel about your uh, uh, the, the test coming up here? Would you kind of be disappointed if you're not starting back in that role, or do you just kind of roll with those now? I mean, obviously, you've talked a lot about your versatility, but I guess I also want to know if you see number 10 as a potential long-term kind of role for you. Um, Yeah, I guess from my perspective, I have to look at the fact that eight weeks ago I missed out on the squad for England and um, for me every opportunity to to be in a test squad um, is a privilege and, you know, I just really enjoyed being back, you know, being able to sing the national anthem alongside... 22 of my mates the last couple of games and um, obviously enjoyed getting extended minutes um, on the weekend, I guess despite it being um, so gutted for Quaidy to, to sustain that injury. But um, yeah, I guess for me, uh, it's probably a question that I've been asked you know, a lot over the past sort of six, seven years is where I see my position long term. And um, you know, I kind of answered it in an interview yesterday, just um, I guess around the fact that I genuinely am willing to, to play wherever the team needs me. And I guess um, if we were to sit down now and say that I could, you know, contribute as part of a match day squad, you know, heading into a World Cup, then it's something that I'd be happy with. So, um, yeah, I'm just thrilled to be back in the squad and hopefully get picked for another match day squad on the weekend. How, how does 10 differ from the other positions? And, and uh, like, are there aspects of it that you like more than others or... What, what 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 is it about ten that appeals to you? Um, look, as I said previously, I grew up playing a lot of ten, and um, I feel like I've got a good grasp of the game management side of things, especially with my kicking game. Um, it, it kind of suits that position, but um, I guess ten's a position where if you're going to play it, you know, for an extended period, you need plenty of uh, plenty of reps both at training and in matches to be able to, um, I guess, get back into the groove of it and. You know, there's so many intricacies in the position that um, it's somewhere that you need to play, you know, consistently to, to be at your best. So I think uh, that's a conversation that we need to have, you know, between myself and the coaching staff going forward. But um, as I've kind of touched on, I think uh, at the moment, I'm just happy to play that utility kind of position and week to week, I'll fit in wherever needed. How, how big a loss is Quaid from, from that role? Yeah, he's obviously a big loss. He's you know a very experienced player, and I think uh, the one thing with Quaidy is he's he's an expert at getting the best out of those people around him. So um, he's obviously it's not we're not hiding the fact that it's a massive loss for us, our team and our squad. But in saying that, we've obviously got two world class tens in in Noah, who obviously steered us to a series win against France last year, and you know was was very solid in that England series as well. And then 
James O'Connor's played 50 plus tests for his country and you know his form at the start of the Super Rugby season for the Reds especially was was outstanding as probably one of the best players in the competition early on so we've got two really good options there you know heading into the to the game this weekend and you know as I said previously it's up to the guys around them to to do their role and make their job easy and hopefully we can uh, put a polished performance together on Saturday. Thanks, Reese. Hey, Reese, are you going to have a conversation next year? I'm sure you will, but with, with the Rebels around where you're going to play? Is it, do, you, do you have an idea at this stage, you know, five months out from, six months out from the Super Season? Uh, look, obviously this year I've played every game at 15 and, um, yeah, I felt like, you know, obviously had a bit of a patchy start to the year, but, you know, towards the end felt like I was finding my feet a little bit more and really able to contribute positively to some of our performances where we're obviously uh, improving towards the end of the year. But um, in saying that, at the, at the moment, I'm just focused on what the next sort of five, six months looks like for the for the Wallabies. And, um, yeah, we'll kind of touch on that with the Rebels coaches at the end of the year. Anything further for these two guys? Yeah. Reese, you mentioned James O'Connor before. Um, so sort of how's he in terms of how's he been in terms of being? I guess you said you know he started at the start of the season in the Super Rugby, and now he's sort of on the. I guess I know he got injured, and now he's on the sort of selection. Well, on the uh, you know I guess on the fringes of that of that you know Wallabies Wallabies uh, you know you know twenty three. How's he sort of found that? Uh, look, obviously there was a couple of injuries there, which was. Um, a shame, and as a player, it obviously disrupts your, um, yeah, your ability to put back-to-back -back performances together. But I think the thing with Rabs is he's got his body in in really good shape, and um, he's been training well, you know, the last month, um, really pushing for selection. So, you know, whether it's him or Noah that get the nod, you know, heading into this weekend, we're we're confident that both of them are, you know, in great physical shape. They're both training really well, and. Um, whoever steers us around on Saturday is going to have the full trust of, you know, not only the rest of the match day squad, but the whole squad over here in Argentina. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it.